Welcome to my craft room, friends. I am so glad that you stopped in to join me to make 10 new spring DIY decor items that are all from the Dollar Tree supplies. I am so giddy to share these projects today. Now let's get crafting. We're gonna start with using this bunny from the Dollar Plus section at the Dollar Tree. This plastic bowl from the Dollar Normal sections and then a foam square with some greenery. My greenery came from Hobby Lobby. I'm using this pick with these leaves you see here as well as a boxwood garland that I'm gonna be cutting up and I just cut up that all the time. I save tons of money doing it that way. Start by cutting down your foam square to fit around the bunny in this oval bowl. We are gonna be gluing all of these foam pieces in there so that we can embellish around the bottom of the bunny. Now the bunny itself is totally cute and you can just put that on a table, but I want you to see that you can take a cute decor piece and make it even better by adding a little garden underneath it. So to conceal that foam, I'm gonna cover it up with some Spanish moss. You can see that I poked some holes into that foam the reason why I did that was because the boxwood pieces from the garland do not have wire in them and it makes it easier to glue those down into the foam so they're all nice and secure. But the one with the leaf, that one has wire in it. So just, you know, when you're working with your florals, work with that accommodation so that you can make sure everything's glued in nice and secure and things aren't falling apart. Once you've got your little garden bunny bed, you're going to go ahead and take some of these eggs from the Dollar Tree a shish kebab stick and I just broke it down to size so it goes up into the egg and then that way I can use this to stake into the foam. That's going to make sure these are in there nice and secure without them popping off because honestly hot glue is not going to hold these eggs on very well. Now one thing I decided to go back and do was to paint the bowl white. I wish I had done this first but sometimes I do things out of order as I'm working on things. I noticed that I think it would look better if I do this and so I still just added it in after all. After that you've got a finished adorable garden bunny bed. For this project, we're going to use one of these frames, four of these also frames. It's kind of like a clipboard, but I want to get to the initial shape, which is this cathedral window. We're going to go ahead and cut all that apart and pop off with a pair of pliers. If you pull it away from it, it comes off real easy. And then the clip on the front. And then also, I forgot to mention, we're gonna be using some of these tumbling blocks, and that's just gonna help strengthen everything on the inside. So go ahead and use a little screwdriver, take off that clip on the front. I always keep my hardware from these kinds of things because sometimes you can use them for other projects. So I just stick them in a Ziploc bag, and then I just keep them in a drawer. Now I'm just gonna measure out a piece of this wood contact paper, and I'm gonna put that on here, but you're gonna see I'm gonna actually take that off. I feel like this project, it's kind of funny. You're seeing me in the process of how I think when I'm crafting and I'm trying something new. I am gluing on these little window frames, and I'm coming around all four sides, and they fit perfectly on this little wooden frame square box that I had from earlier. Now you're gonna see me add in those tumbling blocks to support the sides of my little window frames. We don't want those to get weak, so I'm adding in those wood blocks to strengthen it. They also fit in there nice and perfect. Now at this point you can see that I decided to take back off that contact paper, and I'm still gonna use it, but it's because I decided instead of painting with a brush, I was gonna speed up the process, <laughs> so I'm gonna add some painter tape to the black border of that wood box, and I'm going to take it outside and spray paint the windows white. I also decided to spray paint the bottom inside of that box black. Once I had everything spray painted, <laughs> now I'm coming back in with that contact paper and I'm smoothing it out. And you can see I did cut a little bit of a square corner in each one so that it fits in there nicely. Then last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this greenery that has wire in it and I'm gonna twist it into a wreath, add it to the bottom and you've got the most beautiful farmhouse candle holder. Thank you. 
I found this darling wood house in the craft section at the Dollar Tree. I have some of this long garland greenery and then this gingham ribbon also from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take off that twine ribbon at the top and then I'm going to take this garland and I'm going to twist it into a darling little wreath. It's really simple to do. You just twist a circle, tighten one in and then take the other existing long piece and I like to make sure that I wrap it twice because it makes the garland little wreath look a lot thicker. So I'm just twisting all that into place, adding some hot glue and then I'm going to put that on the front of the house. This house could be decorated so many different ways for so many different holidays. I just think it's so cute and I wanted to make sure I featured it here on my channel to go and find these houses, pick them up and you can do so many neat things with them. Now I'm going to take some wire because I feel like this is, you know, a little bit higher quality than the twine and I'm going to just cut out a piece that's long enough to be able to loop around. I like to always twist my wire like this because it just looks really farmhouse and cute. I don't know. It's just kind of the way I always do it. Once that's nice and snug on there, I just think this is going to look so cute hung up on a wall somewhere. I'm going to add on a gingham bow. And then at this point we could stop here or we can take it a little bit further like I like to do here with my crafts on my channel. I'm going to take one of these metal tag labelers and I'm going to just create two little dots where I know where to take my crocodile to punch out some holes. I love my crocodile tool. I talk about it a lot here on my channel. If you're new, I have had this tool forever. It used to be, well it still is, it's a scrapbook tool that you use to put on eyelets on scrapbook pages. But it goes through metal and cardboard and thick pieces of just pretty much anything and it doesn't hurt your hand to use it. So I went ahead and punched out two holes and now I've got my Brad tray out, my little organizing kit that um, I use for scrapbooking and I'm going to pop out two brads that I think will look cute and work well with this metal tag sign and I'm going to just put those right through the holes and then fasten them into place by opening up the back side of them and to make sure they don't come off or come loose I'm going to just add on some hot glue to glue those into place and then at the front side I'm going to slip in a little piece of paper and I've decided to write the word home but it could be so cute because you could put your address you could put your family's name, whatever you'd like. If you haven't already and you're enjoying this time in my craft room today, please do give this video a thumbs up. I'm so grateful for each and every one that you do. Up next, we're going to be using this bunny sign from the Dollar Tree, these eggs, and then as well as the gingham ribbon. I'm going to be using out of the eggs the teal eggs, the white eggs, and the purple eggs just so I kind of go with the color theme to match the ribbon. Once you've got those all out and unpackaged, go ahead and take your bunny, flip it over and take off the carrots and the staples. Now I'm planning on using those carrots for another DIY on another day so I'm just going to put them to the side and hold on to those. And then for the bunny at the top of his ears, we're going to go ahead and take off that as well. On the back side of most of these, they have this little, almost like an aglet, like the end of a shoelace. You just pop it out and it comes off really easy without having to cut it and that's something you can save too for crafting. So now is probably the trickiest part, but honestly this is so easy. I'm going very slow with my drill because I don't want it to slip and hit my fingers and I just take my time drilling a hole on one side of each of the eggs. The other side of the egg already has a hole. So now I'm going to take my ribbon at the end, I fold the ribbon in half and I'm going to do a little slip knot right here you can see I just went around, pulled it through and tightened it and then on the other end to be able to thread everything through quicker without struggling with the ribbon I'm going to take a piece of wire, I'm going to glue the very tip of that ribbon to the wire so this is going to now serve as a long needle to be able to thread the eggs through and the beads, just make sure the wire is not too thick that things can't get through. So once you've got your ribbon nestled onto the wire, this is going to make it so much easier to thread everything on. I like using this trick a lot when I'm working with ribbon just because it makes it so much faster. So you can see here that I slipped on the first bead and I'm going to come all the way down to the end and we're going to clean up this end where our little loop is. 
this is what you would use to hang up this garland we're making on the wall. So just go ahead and cut off that extra flap from tying that knot. I'm going to add some glue and then I'm going to pull the bead down and this is going to give it a store finished look. This is the kind of stuff that really makes a difference in your crafts. So what I did was I did a bead, an egg, a bead, a knot, then I did a space for about three fingers and then I did another knot, came back on with another bead, then an egg, then a bead, then a knot, then a space then a knot, then a bead, then an egg, then a bead, then a knot. And I repeated this all the way down. You'll see in the very end the finished pattern of what I did. But the fun thing about garlands is that you can do whatever you want with them and just have so much fun. And they make the cutest decorations in a home. So at this point you can see I'm trying to decide what to do with, between the bunny ears. And at first I put all these extra beads in this egg and I kept sitting on it and I just wasn't sure about it yet. I actually went and hung it up and then I decided, no, I don't like the way that that looks. I really want the bunny's ears to be shown better than what it looked with this egg as a distraction in between it. So I went ahead and cut the middle, pulled the egg off, and did these knots, and then I went ahead, pulled off the beads, and on the back side, I glued down those ribbons and I liked this so much more because I felt like it really showed the bunny ears better. But you can see the pattern right here, what I was talking about earlier and how I tied all these and I just loved it because it shows the ribbon, the beads, and the eggs and then the bunny has the spotlight right center in the middle of your garland. It'll look so cute on a shelf or on a wall wherever you decide to hang it up. For this DIY, it's honestly one of my all-time favorite projects ever. I'm going to take two of these wire hanging baskets that are in the garden section around springtime, but sometimes you can find these throughout the year. I'm going to take some wire cutters, use some really strong wire cutters on this part because it'll make it so much easier, cut off that middle circle, and now we're going to take those pieces and straighten them out. Now as I'm straightening them out, you're going to see the circle frame pop the wire is going to come apart right there that's where the joint is on that bottom circle but it's not a big deal because it's really easy to repair it and you don't even notice it in the end so we're going to go ahead and straighten out all of those pieces so they're nice and straight as you can it's okay if they're not perfectly straight they're going to look so cute when we're all done now this is how i repaired it it's really easy just put a little bit of hot glue hold it till it dries and they stay in place and then you're going to add some more hot glue and then take some twine and you're going to wrap it around where that joint is. This is going to strengthen it so that it stays in place and it doesn't break on you again. I love this project so much. We are making this into a bird cage by joining these two baskets together. Now you're going to see here I made a whole bunch of little J's at the end of that long wired piece. We're going to bring them together with that other basket we have not cut the circle off of. We're going to take our wire cutters and pinch those wires down into place all the way around. You don't need hot glue on this part. The wires do a fantastic job holding it into place. These would be so beautiful on like an entry table, in the center of a dining room table, or even at a wedding. Oh, they'd be so pretty. For springtime and whatever other season you want to you can use these in the fall and put like crows inside of them I've done that before too so now I'm taking a lid from a mason jar and I'm just using some e6000 and some hot glue because I just don't trust metal on metal with hot glue I like e6000 it locks it in so much stronger now I'm gonna take a ping pong ball yep I said a ping pong ball <laughs> I wanted to get this larger round shape and stay on the Dollar Tree budget for y'all I'm going to just cut out a circle on the bottom of it so it will lay flat. And I don't show it here, but I actually ended up adding a wood bead to the top to give it more of a finial look. You could actually add a finial from, let's say, Hobby Lobby, but 
I, I didn't do that. I wanted to stay on a Dollar Tree budget. Now to make them longer, you just add one more cage. It makes it really long. In the end, you have the most beautiful bird cage at different heights, depending on how tall you want to make it, and put that on top of a charger plate and fill all kinds of goodies inside. It's such a beautiful look. This DIY is super simple. You're gonna take one of these plastic Easter baskets and some carrots from the Dollar Tree. I'm also gonna be using some fabric in just a bit. You're gonna see that as well as some Dollar Tree rope. I took off the handle, measured about the height of the carrots from the bottom of the basket, and now with my scissors, I'm just going to cut off the extra that we don't need. Once you've got that all cut off, you're gonna take some burlap fabric and you're gonna just glue it onto the bottom of the basket, pulling it as tightly as you can, wrapping it all the way around. And you can see here that I put the handle back on. It has these little teeth on it that allow it to just pop right back onto the basket. Now we're gonna take those carrots and we're going to just wrap them all the way around the whole basket. My inspiration for this basket actually came from the Michaels store. They had this basket at their store and when I saw it, I knew right away I had to dupe this one. It was super expensive at their store and we're gonna make this so affordable using Dollar Tree carrots, their basket, and some rope. Once I had the carrots all the way around, I went ahead and took one of their nautical brown ropes. I untwisted it because there's three on each rope that are twisted together. And then I wrapped it around the handle and then I took another one of the ropes from the Dollar Tree that's not untwisted and I just coiled that all around on the inside, gluing it all together to make sure it had a nice finished look. Once everything was all coiled and pushed down inside, I used my scissors and cut off the extra that I didn't need and continued to coil it until it was all the way completely finished and you could no longer see the yellow basket. This was the easiest project and the results turned out so stinking cute. What do you all think? Leave a comment down below to let me know if you like it. For this DIY, we are gonna be using some of these glass jars. I picked them up at Target, but honestly, you can get these all over the place and lots of them at the Dollar Tree, and then some rope from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use two white nautical ropes and then one brown rope. So what I'm doing is I'm noticing that these need to be a certain length at the bottom, and I'm gonna make a big oval shape because we're gonna be making a glass jar basket to hold all of these in. I'm just gonna to continue to coil them around until I get to the end of that rope, and then I'm gonna add on that second rope. I wanted to make sure that it's wide enough and that junction of those two ropes is at the bottom, and then I'm gonna start coming and building up the side. Now I'm showing all the steps of this because I just want you to see exactly how I built it up the side where you can make your basket really strong. My biggest recommendation is make sure that you're massaging those ropes together every single time you put another bead of glue along that line. And then once you get those all going and you notice that it's getting stronger and stronger, this is the coolest thing. I'm going to actually put some handles on here without having to compromise the rope being cut. You can see that I pulled it out a little bit longer and then I continued on my journey around. So now I've created two handles and then where I stopped, I'm gonna bring back in that darker rope and I'm gonna go around two more times and it makes the coolest basket to be able to hold these glass jars. Now they sell these so, so, so expensively. On sites like Pottery Barn, friends, I made this for $3. Please know that you can have the most beautiful things in your home for hardly any money. Once the basket was all done, I added in my jars and whatever florals I wanted.
For this DIY, we're going to be using foam core board, foam squares, and some florals of your liking. All of my supplies are from the Dollar Tree. Now we are going to start by sketching on the letter for our last name, our monogram, and then we're going to cut it out with an X-Acto knife. Once that's all cut out, you're going to take your foam squares and start cutting them down to fit around the shape of the S. They don't have to be perfectly spaced on that foam core piece, just as long as you have something for your florals to be able to go into. This has such a high-end look, and these monogram rates are so expensive. We're going to make this for just a few bucks. Then I'm going to take my greenery, and I'm going to follow along the shape of the S, making sure I don't compromise that shape, so that way it looks like the letter. So continue to fill in all of your next floral that are small, and then after that, keep filling it in with all of your bigger florals until you have completely covered those foam pieces to make it look like the shape of the letter of your liking and your last name. Once you're all done with that, flip it over and add a piece of rope or twine to the back to be able to hang it up and you're ready to display. For this DIY, I'm going to be taking a trash can from the Dollar Tree and we are going to be manipulating it into a top hat for spring. So what you do is you take it at the middle, towards the bottom some, and you're just going to start pressing it in, squeezing it. This mesh wire bends really easily without having any issues and you can see that I'm pinching the extra down inside the hat. Once I've got that pinched, I went ahead and squished it one more time. So I kind of have almost like a zigzag in the wire where it's pinched underneath and then it's brought in a little bit towards the bottom again where the top hack meets the rim. So I'm creating it to not be so tall. If I didn't do this where I pushed it in one more time, it would almost be too tall. So you can see that right there, there's some metal that's pinched zigzag back and forth. Then at the top, I took a round piece of burlap. I cut that and glued that on and pressed it down. And now I'm taking another piece of burlap to go around the side of the top of the hat. And I'm just gonna cut off any extra and then glue everything down in place. The trick to make this look high end is you wanna make sure you have as clean a line as possible. And then for the brim of the hat, I've decided to take some of this pretty lace burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And first I'm gonna zigzag it back and forth cause it's got a wire in it and that's gonna make my job so much easier. And then I'm gonna take the ribbon and put it on to the rim of the hat. And I'm coming underneath and adding the hot glue like this because this is allowing it to be able to seep down in there and lock everything on. And then one more tip, I came back in with my hot glue and I went underneath each one of the pleats and added a little dot of hot glue to make sure the pleats don't lift up. Now you can still see the wire around that bottom part of the hat. I don't want to see that. So I'm going to take another piece of burlap ribbon. I'm using this teal color which is really pretty. And then I'm going to come back in with this gingham ribbon. All of these ribbons are from the Dollar Tree except for obviously the tan burlap that I brought in from Joann's. And I wrapped it around a couple times and I'm using that gingham ribbon to clean up the top of that teal ribbon because I did have to kind of, you know, pleat it and fold it on there to be able to conceal all of that last of that wire. Now you could definitely leave the wire exposed, but I did not like the wire exposed. I wanted to cover it up. I thought this was so much prettier and for a dollar with all of these other little supplies here and there, it turned out so pretty. So now I'm coming in on the side and I'm just adding on some florals and then I'm going to take some of my bead garland that you know I love so much and I just coiled that around my finger and stuck that down in there and then I'm going to add on a really big beautiful gingham bow over towards the back and then the last finishing touches because it's for Easter springtime I'm going to add in a couple carrots up at the top and after that it's ready to be displayed somewhere in your home.
For this next DIY, we're going to be using some of these books from the Dollar Tree. Friends, they sell these inspirational books for so much money. I hope that you have not purchased these when you can make them yourself. Start by picking up however many books you need for your inspirational word. Then with your craft knife, slit along where the book cover is and that first cover page. Now depending on how rough you want it to be, sand off some of the extra and then take some twine, wrap those books together and tie it tight with a pretty bow on it or a knot, whichever you prefer. Once you're all done getting your bow tied on there, at this point you can put whatever you want on these books. Your family name, a beautiful word to inspire, it's completely up to you. Or you can even leave them blank and they are just so pretty to be able to put out in your decor and it's the easiest DIY that costs almost pennies. You can also use old books that you were planning on donating. I always recommend using a book that you are not planning on reading anymore because once it goes in here, it's not coming out. Then this is where it gets even easier. If you have a Cricut machine or a silhouette, you can obviously cut out some vinyl letters, but the Dollar Tree has some rub-on transfers and all you have to do is cut out the letters you want, take them with a popsicle stick, place them on the book, rub them on and you have the most beautiful DIY for hardly any money. Friends, again, if I could convince you, don't ever buy these. These are so affordable and I know so many people buy these for home decor. I hope you felt inspired by these 10 projects today for the spring. I am so giddy for spring to get here. I'm sure many of you are feeling it too as we're all feeling cozy in our homes on cold winter days. I'm gonna recommend a couple of videos here at the end. Make sure you leave a comment down below to let me know which one you like, which one you think you will try, and until the next episode, bye friends.